Hi, this is Dave and welcome to To The Table, a series of videos where I review and discuss various board and card games, looking at them from a family perspective. Today we're going to be taking a preview at a project that's currently on Kickstarter by Robert Burke Games called Draco Magi. Now Draco Magi is a two-player strategic card battling game where each of you are an acolyte who is in control of an army of dragons that you will be deploying to various battlefields in order to combat and win. When you win at those particular battlefields, you collect a precious gem. Now, if you can collect three of one type of gem, or three different gems, or four of any color gems, then you would be the winner of the game. Let's take a look at this game, the components that are in it, how it's played, and I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, let's take a look at what's going to come with Draco Magi. And the first thing that I want to let you know is that this is a prototype version of the game, so it may not reflect the final product of what's going to come to you. Now, if you notice, there's going to be several types of cards that are going to come into this game, and let's get started right away with the coolest ones, which are these two decks right here. Those are your dragon decks, and they are going to be the same for each player. We just have, happen to have green here and uh, gold here for the players, and this is where all the dragons are going to be coming that you're going to be deploying out into the battlefield. For example, here we've got a bronze dragon, we've got a brass dragon here, a gold dragon, so there's some of the metallic dragons. And we've got purple, and we've got green, we've got red. So this, this is a whole bunch of different dragons that are going to be coming in here that uh, you're going to be deploying from your hand to battle the other player. Next, these cards right here are going to comprise and make up your battle decks. Now, these two decks here, one is for the green player, one's for the gold player, are the same again and they are they serve two purposes number one here if you see on the top there's a bunch of different bursts and different things like that and they are going to resolve any ranged attacks that you're going to uh, deliver and secondly uh, um, that's so that's the top part and then at the bottom we will be using this text down here to resolve any melee attacks now this deck here in the center that has the same backs as the other ones, this is going to make up the advanced battle deck. And these will be noted by having a red background here. And if you notice, there's a little bit more on the number of bursts here. We've got a two and a three and the uh, for your ranged. And then also down at the bottom, there's a little bit more stuff that's going on during the melee combat. So you'll start off with two of those in the game and then they get added later on. So it does add a little bit of a deck building aspect to this game. Finally, there is this stack of two-sided battlefield cards. And this is where the action is going to take place. And if you notice on the cards, there's some little text boxes down at the bottom that have various different effects. For example, here on this card, um, this is the Dark Lands. And the text on the bottom says, plus one shield for black and purple dragons. So it's going to be in your better interest to deploy those types of dragons to this battlefield. Now, one of the cool reasons that these are double-sided is that one of the dragons has the ability to flip these cards over. And if you notice here that there's a red gem, well, maybe you're trying to battle over getting a red gem. Well, if it gets flipped over, now all of a sudden the gem is yellow. So it may not be of use to you anymore. So that can happen uh, during the course of the game. So we've got these nice, beautiful artwork on these double-sided battlefield cards. And then finally, there's going to be a first player marker that's going to uh, make come with the game to make sure to keep track of who the first player is in determining deploying dragons and combat. Okay, let's get this game set up and I'll show you how it's played. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've gotten this game set up and ready to go and there's a few things that I've done in advance. And what I have done, first of all, is um, we've separated both of the dragon decks and we've shuffled them up and we have both of the battle decks separated here. And what I did was I took two of these advanced battle deck cards, the ones with the red, and I dealt them to each player, two to each player, and shuffled them into the deck. Um, and you do this the first few times that you play the game to get an understanding of how the cards work. And later on, once you have a handle of how these cards work, you will um, not deal the two cards out and in turn you will do what's called an advanced battle draft and you will each player will be dealt three cards from this deck and they will look at them they will select one for themselves one to give to their opponent and then the third one will get shuffled back into this deck okay so once we take those advanced battle cards 
we will shuffle them into this, these battle decks and so they're ready to go. Next, what I have done is we have shuffled up and we have scryed the battlefield. And so there are three of them that will be out here. This one is off to the side. And we have dealt these from the bottom of this deck so that we don't see what's going on. Now let me quickly uh, focus in on one of these cards to explain to you a few things about these cards, okay? First of all, if we look at this, each card will have a name. For example, this one here is the Mountains of Mist. There will be a gemstone on here, of which we're going to be trying to compete to win either three of one particular type of stone, three, um, one of each of three different colors of stones, or four of any color stone. So there's some variation as to how you're going to win. And then um, on the bottom of each of the cards, and it's going to face both directions so that you can see, is going to be some condition text that's on the card. Now, for example, here, this one says plus one shield to or minus one shield to all metallic dragons. So this means that any metallic dragons that come here, they are going to have a penalty on their shield values. Now there is a dragon in this deck that uh, can be used to flip over these cards. So if we flip over these cards, this look at this thing's going to change, especially with this card. Said mountains of mist. Now it's going to change, and now it's become Frozen Tundra. Now, we, the gemstone here still is blue. Sometimes they'll change. But if you notice, the condition text now went to a plus one to all ranged attacks. So you may or may, or may not know that, but if you had played a bronze dragon there and flipped it over, now all of a sudden that penalty to metallic dragons doesn't make any bit of difference anymore. So that's kind of how these cards operate here, okay? So, and the other thing I wanted to talk about now is um, the text that's on, or the makeup of these dragon cards. So if we look at this card in particular right here off the top, we'll just explain to you the anatomy of this card. And this is a red dragon right here. And if we notice at the top, there is a shield. And this is going to be the defense value for this dragon against ranged attacks. Next, if we look at the... Uh, next to where his mouth is, there is an icon that looks like a fireball. And this is going to be used for determining uh, ranged attacks. And then on the other side, there is going to be these claw marks here. And that is going to be for your melee attacks. And then finally at the bottom, there is some, uh, each dragon has its own ability, and so this says, if ranged attack succeeds, the red dragon may attack a second dragon on this battlefield. So each of these dragons is going to have various uh, conditions and abilities for them. So that is, uh, that's the anatomy of these cards, and they're going to be different. Some cards will have the ability to have a ranged attack, some won't. Okay, and then again, on these, these uh, particular battle cards here, Let's look at these, the anatomy of this real quick. And if you notice here um, at the top, in resolving ranged attack, you have two sides of this card. We have a shield value and we have this fireball value. And so uh, if you're going to have to draw, like for example here, you will draw the number of cards for your shield value. If there's a burst here, it means a success. So for example here, this would be an unsuccessful block. But on this side, if you were to use it as an attack, this would be a successful attack. And I'll get to that when we get to the ranged attacks. And then finally at the bottom, this text down at the bottom is going to be used for melee attack. So I will get to those when we get to the combat section. So what I have done is, that's, I wanted to go over those cards. And then at the beginning of our turn, we'll determine who the first player is. We'll be the first player. And then each player will draw a hand of eight dragon cards into their hand. So we'll start off with a starting deck. So next, let me show you a sample turn order and how some of the combat is resolved. Okay, now let's look at our starting hand of dragons here. We have a red dragon. We have a brass dragon, a black dragon. We have a gold dragon. We have this battle dragon, and he's kind of unique, and he needs to be hit twice to... to uh, kill him. Uh, purple dragon, another bronze, and then a black dragon. So we should have eight. 
We have eight dragons in our hand. Now, uh, since I'm the first player, what I will do is we will go back and forth and we will deploy these dragons to these various battlefields in an attempt to um, win a particular combat. So, uh, for example here, maybe I might put this one, this uh, brass dragon here, and the other player may in turn place a black dragon here. Um, maybe we'll put a uh, we'll put a purple dragon underneath it because it has this ability of stealth that gets placed underneath it, and uh, and they have different things here. Maybe we'll put this one over here, and we're going to go back and forth in deploying these different. Uh, we're going to be deploying these different dragons back and forth on these on these battlefields. Okay, so I actually put that on the wrong side. Put this card over here, I'm trying to deal with two different hands. So uh, these are going to go back and forth, and uh, so we've got a couple of these cards that have been placed on the the battlefield here, and um, there is a couple different things to notice about or to note when playing these dragons. Number one. You can only play your own dragons on your side of the battlefield. And you can only have three dragons per battlefield. And unless there's a rule that's different, when you place another dragon on the battlefield, it'll be placed on top. Now this purple one I slid underneath because it says stealth, and it says you may place a purple dragon under any dragon you have already placed on the battlefield. And it says also if you win this gem, draw one advanced battle card and place it on top of your battle deck. So he's going to go underneath there. Now, a couple things that I want to, uh, to make note of here is, for example, um, I will place this. If it's my turn, I'm going to place this particular dragon here. And if you notice here, it has a ranged attack. I'm going to place it down right here. Now, when I do that, uh, immediately there's going to be, he's going to basically fly in and going to attack. If there's any dragons on this side of the battlefield, he will attack them. Now, how this is going to work is I will look at, I will draw two cards, because he's got two on his, um, his little uh, ranged attack thing. I will take the top two cards of my battle deck and I will reveal them face up. And so I have, if I notice here on this side here, I have two successes. So I have two successes against this black dragon. Now this black dragon has a shield value of two and so what he's going to do is he's going to reveal the top two cards of his deck and we will look at the shield values and if we look here he has no successes whatsoever. So now this dragon loses the battle and it will be discarded. Now this particular dragon here has, uh, it says, if the gold dragon's ranged attack succeeds, draw one advanced battle card and place it on top of your battle deck. Well, that's a really good bonus because now I'm going to get one of these stronger cards and I'm going to place it right on top of my battle deck. These cards here that we've used will be discarded. And the play is going to continue until all of our dragons we choose to deploy, or if we want to, we can hold on to uh, some for a future round. But typically, you'll want to deploy them all. Now, once we've gone ahead and maybe we've we've um, we've deployed a couple of these different things here, and these dragons are maybe we have this one here, this one here, this one. And I'm just kind of putting some cards out. Maybe we're going to hold on to one of these for the next round. Now, once we've had all these dragons deployed and we've handled any kind of uh, ranged attacks or anything like that, what we're going to do is we will go ahead and we will do some. We will resolve any melee combat. And so, what we were going to do is we will look at the bottom text of these cards and see what it uh, what applies to any melee attack. Now, for example, here this says um, for this. Brass Dragon, it says, increase the melee value of all Brass Dragons to four if two or three metallic dragons are present on this battlefield, including Brass. Well, I happen to have a Gold Dragon here, which is also metallic, so this is going to change now to a four. So now I have a four, a two, and a three. So that's going to re add up to nine. And this particular one over here is going to be a four. So if we were going to resolve this melee combat here first, what I'm going to do is I will draw nine cards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards off of my 
battle deck, and they will only have four. So it looks like I'm going to have the advantage here, but you never know. And so what I'm going to do now is we will start in uh, resolving the way that these are on, you know, they will be destroyed in terms of the order of placement. And we'll look at any of their, uh, any of their abilities here. So for example, here with this green dragon, it says reduce the shield value of target dragon. Oh, this was for range attacks. But anyway, so we're going to look at this now. What we will do is, um, if you notice on these cards too, that there are some symbols at the bottom. There's some suns and stars and moons. And uh, what we can do is we can play these as either singles or combos. And there's different things that we can do here. For example, um, this one here, we just drew this claw ambush. It says, may attack with or defend against one claw. When uses an attack, the attacking player may randomly choose one of the defender's battle cards, which must be immediately discarded. So if I do this, I can make them get rid of one of their cards too. So, um, But I could play them single or a combo. So for example here, if I want to play, uh, maybe I'm going to play these, these three cards here. They all have... Um, they all have a sun on them. So I'm going to attack with um, a claw ambush so I can attack this, attack. So two claws and a bite. So if I do this now, I can make the defender immediately discard one of their battle cards. So I maybe just make them get rid of this one here. Now it's up to them now, they're going to have to work with what they have to defend against um, two claws and one bite. Now if I want, now, if I wanted to, I could try to play this card, Flight. It says, no attack value, may defend against any attack or attack combo. Unfortunately, in this dungeon here, it says, no flight cards may be played here. So I can't play this particular one here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to try to defend against um, this two claws. So this, I still have a bite that gets through, so this dragon is going to be destroyed. And this combat is going to go back and forth, resolving these different uh, cards. You know, I can keep playing cards in my hand here um, in order to destroy him. Now, he only has this one card, so I can basically just put a claw here. He's got nothing to defend against this card here. So this one's going to be destroyed, and then I will claim this and take this into my, um, into my winning hand my winnings. And so this battle is going to go back and forth until um, there's like no dragons left or if there's something else where you don't have any battle cards left. And so what's going to happen is um, any of these things that will be left over, uh, like if the battlefield gets frozen for some reason, the, the dragons will stay there. Or if there's a, a battle that's not, if there's a tie, the uh, battlefield will stay there. But we will, again, at the end, we will refill these up till three battlefields are on the ground, on the table. All these dragons, unless they're staying here, will be discarded and shuffled up and drawn, or will draw new ones. And then each player will then in turn take one of their uh, advanced battle cards and will add that to your deck and shuffle it up. And this is going to continue on round after round until somebody achieves the win conditions. And that is Draco Magi. Whew. Boy, that's, that's Draco Magi. And uh, I tried to get through as much of uh, the gameplay as I could like for a sample turn um, without taking up too much time because I try to keep my videos at a relatively shorter length. Sometimes that's not all possible but uh, I wanted to get through this and uh, spend some time talking about the game. Now with Draco Magi there is a lot that's going on with this particular game and there is a lot of reading that you're going to have to do. You need to make sure that you pay attention to each of the dragons that you deploy onto your battlefield. In particular, you have to look at their attack values for ranged and melee. And then also each of the dragons has their own particular abilities that they can perform. Also, each of the battlefields has their own conditions too. So you have to be aware of all of that when you are going to resolve any of the combat. So you do have to pay attention to that. Now, once you play this game, it goes by very quickly. So each of these rounds, you're going to be deploying dragons, and then you're going to be resolving combat, and it's going to go rather quickly. So it's not going to take up a lot of time to play this game, but uh, you're probably going to look at maybe about a half an hour to play, uh, to play this particular game. 
maybe shorter if the battlefield cards just happen to come out and you're able to win them and uh, be successful right away. Now, a couple things. Let me talk about this game. First of all, the artwork is simply amazing and it's beautiful. Each of those dragons, they look really, really, really cool. And this is just a few of the dragons now included in the game because uh, at, when I recorded this now, there has already been a number of stretch goals that have been uh, surpassed. So there's going to be even more cool dragons that are going to be added to the uh, dragon deck. And then we also have all of the artwork that's on those different battlefields. So it looks really, really, really cool. And if you look at this, the theme of the game, it really, really comes through. Like you are this acolyte. So you, you are basically like sending your dragons to the battlefield in order to um, combat each other. Now, if we look at the combat aspect, this is kind of where uh, some people may or may not like this particular game. And, um, and I will explain to you why. First of all, when you look at the ranged attacks on these dragons, when you send them out, you're just drawing cards off the top of the deck. So it's completely random. But you also have to understand that when, when you're playing that particular card, it's just flying out and attacking. It's, um, you know, in the game, we are an acolyte who's sending the dragon out. So the dragon essentially is, in one way, you're in control, but in the other hand, it's like it's just going out there attacking. And so you're just it's just going to be the luck of the cards that come back and see what happens. It's almost like a free attack when it comes out there and does a range attack. And so if it survives or whatever, they're, they're going to have a little bit more strategy when it comes to the melee combat. So you have that. So some people may not like the randomness of the range attack, but I think that it's fine. And then looking at the, uh, the melee combat itself, um, I like the fact that you can play cards in a combination and you have to be aware of how many cards you're going to burn through. If you use a big huge combo, you lay all these cards down and they in turn play reveal a uh, they reveal a flight card and they just fly away, you discard all those. Now you've just wasted precious cards. So you um, you know, especially if you're putting like three cards out at one time, that's quite quite a lot. So you have to be aware of certain battlefield conditions. For example, in that one gameplay, um, they couldn't fly away. So I could play a, as big of a combo as I wanted, but maybe somewhere else it may be a little bit different. And you don't want to burn through all those cards because if you have nothing left to play, you're going to lose. Because you, Or if you only have one card, it's all you have, you're going to lose your dragons. So there is, there is definitely a, some strategy in hand management for this game. Now, looking at this game from a family perspective, this game certainly is going to improve reading skills and comprehension skills because you have to be able to read and understand everything that's going on. Now, this game, I would say, is going to be for teens and up. I wouldn't really play this game with uh, younger kids. I would say 13 and up, and that's probably what the recommended age is for this particular game. So I would stick with that. Um, because of the comprehension level of what's going on and the, the number of things that are, that are also happening at the same time. There is uh, nothing that should be threatening in terms of any kind of magic or anything like that. So uh, the game doesn't really uh, have the, any of that kind of overtones. There is a card that you use a magic attack, but it doesn't really, it's not really like uh, something you should be worried about. Like if some people are a little hesitant about something like Magic the Gathering. Now... Um, and again, the dragons and they're just the various different colors. It's just it's just fantasy artwork. Um, but this game definitely does have the uh, reading comprehension. It is definitely going to be a skill that is going to be developed with this particular game because you have to read and you have to be able to understand and also have to recall all of the information. And then also, uh, definitely, this is going to be uh, resource management by dealing with your hand and working with what you have. So. Those are some key things for this particular game. Um, overall, I like this game. There's a lot that's going on. It plays very, very quickly. Um, I'm okay with the randomness of the ranged attack. 
Um, but uh, certainly uh, for me, I struggle with the combo cards because I like to play a lot of cards and so I kind of find myself shorthanded. But um, that's just a lesson that I have to learn and the more that I play the game, I'm sure the better that I will be at it. So if you want to engage in this particular kind of uh, a card battling game where you are deploying dragons to, ba uh, to battle on the battlefields, then take the time to pledge on Kickstarter for Draco Magi by Robert Burke Games. All right. Well, that's it for now, and join me again next time as we take a look at another game and see how it makes it to the table.